The next topic that we are going to talk about is chemistry of life. And remember that this is an AMP review specifically for a given class. Do what your teacher wants you to do. And even if you're in my class, make sure you look at all that highlighted material, not just this, but I think this is going to be a pretty good help for you on your first test. I think it will be. Matter is everything that takes up space and has mass, and chemistry is the study of matter. In an atom, there are three particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron that we talk about. The proton is positive, it's in the nucleus, the neutrons neutral, it's in the nucleus, and the electrons buzz around the outside like bees around a beehive. It's not certain, certain where the, these electrons are at any given time. If we look at the periodic chart, this is a look at carbon, for instance. The top number is called the atomic number, and it tells the number of protons. The bottom number is called the mass number. It tells the protons plus the neutrons. So to find the number, number of neutrons, take the big number, subtract the little one. 12 minus 6 makes 6 neutrons. So, class, what would happen if this number happened to be 14? 14 minus 6 makes what? Eight, eight. Makes eight. So in that case, we would still have carbon because it's the same number of protons, but it would be a different flavor of carbons. What do we call that? Isotope. We call that an isotope. And by the way, we're going to learn later another word, isomer, is when a chemical has the same formula, like for instance, C6H12O6 is glucose, but it's also fructose it's because glucose has a six sided ring structure and we know that fructose has a five-sided structure, but they still have the same number of atoms, and they are therefore called isomers. It's not just atoms, but it's the kind of atoms that they share in, in common. Suspension. Blood is classified as, as a suspension and talked about as liquid mixed with a solid, a colloid, is uh, an example of colloid in milk. I believe I'm right in saying that mayonnaise is also an example of a colloid. Solvents are things that dissolve solids, and the universal solvent that we talk about is what? Water. It is water, H2O. If we have a compound, we have two different, two or more different molecules bonding together. When atoms interact with each other in a chemical manner, usually it's an interaction of electrons in the outer shell. This is called a valence shell of electrons, and when there is a stable outer shell, it is called an octet. In chemistry, if an element is negative, it is an anion. If it is positive, it is a cation. If there are two electrons shared in a single bond, how many are shared in a double bond? Four. And then how many in a triple bond? Six total, right? Okay. All right, let's talk about covalent and ionic for just a moment. Covalent means sharing of electrons, whereas ionic usually means giving and taking, giving and receiving electrons. If, if there is a nonpolar covalent molecule, it means that one end is not distinctly positive or negative as compared to the other one. And the, the key example of that is hydrogen bonding to hydrogen. It's the same element on each end of a dumbbell looking thing. And so it doesn't matter how you look at it. One end doesn't have the upper hand. So this is a nonpolar covalent bond. One single bond with two electrons being shared in the middle. With water, however, there are more electrons on the side of the oxygen as compared to the hydrogens. And so that creates a dipole situation, a, positive, a negative and a positive end. And look up for a second. That's what causes water to, to flip-flop so that the positive hydrogens are attracted to the negative oxygens on the other water, and that's what causes hydrogen bonding. It causes cohesion, adhesion, helps water stick together. Because water is polar covalent, there are electrons shared, but there's also a difference between one end of the molecule and another. A detergent is a molecule that can blend with a fat, like dissolves like, and also blend with water. So it can help pull that oily stain out, and then because it's 
soluble in water, it will be flushed out of the wash water. <clears throat> Ionic compounds are compounds that are positive and negative. And we said that just a minute ago that an anion is a negative ion, a cation is a positive ion. And remember that if we have a reaction where electrons are given or taken, oftentimes it's called an oxidation reduction reaction or a redox reaction. In your body, there is a formula uh, or, a, or a chemical reaction that takes place. CO2 and water can make carbonic acid. This is an important system in the body because it allows CO2, which is a gas, to be carried soluble into blood. What can also happen is break into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions, and these act to help buffer the blood, uh, the pH of the blood, which leads us to the next topic. If there are lots of hydrogen ions, we have an acid. If there are lots of hydroxide ions, we have a base. If the hydrogens and the hydroxides are equal, then we have pH of seven, which is neutral. In a weird way, listen closely, the more hydrogen ions you have, the less the pH. So a pH of one is more concentrated than a pH of three, for instance. So let's talk about that for just a minute. If we had lemon juice, pH of three, and coffee, pH of five, that is separated three to four and then four to five. Remember that there's a tenfold difference between each number. So between three and four, there's tenfold. Between four and five, there's tenfold. 10 times 10. How much stronger is lemon juice than coffee? That's 100 times. You multiply that. Okay, very good. Very nice. In chemical systems, there is potential energy. It can be energy due to position like a rock sitting on top of a cliff that can then move down to a lower energy level. It can also be chemical potential energy like the energy in a piece of wood. You can light a piece of wood and it burns quite nicely. Right now is the time for marshmallows and s'mores around the campfire. It's almost time for Halloween. <laughs> if we say kinetic, we, need, we mean energy of movement. And when we say kinesiology, we're talking about the movement of muscles, how muscles move and what they do. If a reaction is endergonic, it requires energy. Exergonic gives off energy. So what your body tries to do is it tries to pair these reactions. So ATP, as the phosphates are cleaved off of ATP, they supply energy for reactions that are endergonic or energy requiring. If a reaction is anabolic, if we're making something, then we have to dehydrate it. We have to remove water out of it to join two molecules. If we are breaking it, a catabolic reaction, we cut with water. So that's called hydrolysis, hydrolysis. Everybody say hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. Remember in chemical reactions that enzymes decrease activation energy. Usually they're proteins. Usually they are not used up in a chemical reaction. Usually if you want to mess up an enzyme, heat it up. And that will denature it and make it non-functional. Remember that water changes temperature slowly. It does store and release heat. This is kind of nice because when it freeze out, freezes outside, it doesn't automatically freeze the surface freeze the whole lake. If, it, if the lake does freeze, usually it's just that top layer. That, by the way, is another feature of water in that when water freezes, it forms a beautiful crystalline structure. It's less dense than water. Ice floats to the top, and I'm not sure I said any of that correctly, but what I was trying to say is when water freezes, it becomes less dense than water, and it floats to the top, and so the water column freezes from the top down, insulates and protects the other critters inside of the water column. If something is hydrophilic, we say it is water loving. If it is hydrophobic, it is water hating. Fats and oils are water hating. Electrolytes are things that conduct electricity in water. Usually these are ions. These are like sodium, potassium, chlorine. Salt is kind of interesting because we say table salt, sodium chloride, a metal and a non-metal that's what we think of when we think of salt. But salt could be potassium chloride, another metal bond bonded to chlorine. So we have a metal and a non-metal bonding to form a salt. Remember that monomers make up polymers. If it happens to be a carbohydrate, it is a monosaccharide making up a disaccharide, which can make up a polysaccharide, which is starch. 
remember that amino acids make up proteins and there is a, le a four level organization of these proteins. So let's talk about that for just a minute. Just the simple order of amino acid bonding is the primary structure. The secondary structure is does this protein form a spiral or a helix? Does it form a beta pleated sheet or something that looks like drapes? Tertiary is how does it bend and twist and fold upon itself to become functional? I learned the other day that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is what helps to bend proteins so that they can become functional. The quaternary structure is how several proteins function together to do something. Hemoglobin is an example of this in the blood. Fatty acids are fatty molecules. It takes three of them to combine with glycerol to make a triglyceride. Remember that between the carbons in the main chain of the fatty acid, if all of the hydrogen positions are already taken, that is called a saturated fatty acid. If we have a single bond, it's called monounsaturated like olive oil. If we have several double bonds in that chain, it is polyunsaturated like corn oil. An interesting other cellular application of fats is that phospholipids are what create the cell membrane, and we're going to look, that, look at that more in, in our next review. But the phosphate head or the phosphate base head is hydrophilic, and the fatty acid tails are hydrophobic. And we also have talked about proteins. Proteins are found all through the cell and the cell membrane. We'll talk about those more in the next review video. Remember that ATP is made out of adenine, ribose, and phosphate. DNA is made out of adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, uh, bases. Nucleotides, which are made of a base, a sugar, and a phosphate, are the repeating units of DNA and RNA. Remember that RNA has uracil, but not thymine. So that concludes our brief review of chemistry.